Now in today's video, you're gonna get an inside look from a canine behaviorist why you should not think about getting a Labrador Retriever, a breed that is in my home right now. That's right, today we're gonna to go over my top five reasons why I think you absolutely shouldn't get one of the most popular dog breeds in the planet. Welcome back to the Fenrir Labrador Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO of FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly ever want to know about the glorious Labrador Retriever and then how to become a high level canine leader that can raise perfect lab companions. So if you're a lifelong Labrador lover or just thinking about getting your first one, I promise you this channel is for you. So start by hitting that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell and you'll never miss a future Labrador or video. But with all that over and done with, let's dive into today's video. We're going to go over my five reasons why I think you shouldn't be getting a Labrador Retriever. Now, the Labrador is one of the most popular breeds in the US and UK because of its temperament and proven track record as a wonderful family dog. Now, I should know as our family dog, Sully, is a yellow Labrador and we all absolutely adore him. And that being said, labs aren't for everyone. So I'm going to be giving you my top five reasons why you might not be the right person for a Labrador if any of this suits you and your lifestyle. Now, at number one, labs were bred to be hunting companions and primarily used to retrieve birds from water or marshy areas, so they have a water-repellent outer coat and a warm insulating undercoat. Having a dense undercoat means that they will shed constantly and really blow their coat twice a year, and that comes out like a carpet bomber fur. So if regular grooming isn't something that you have the desire or time to work on, then a lab probably isn't gonna be a good fit for you and your family. Now, another reason why a lab might not be a great fit for your family is if you're not willing or able to set clear and consistent boundaries with your wonderful canine companion. Now, many lab owners report that they or a family member have tripped over the dog when it lays down behind them really closely or walks too closely to them. Labs absolutely love to be around their people but can become an absolute nuisance because of their size. Now, also know that their tail is thick and it will clear everything off the coffee table very easily and it can even hurt you when they get really excited and that thing really starts to swing. Now, unfortunately, we have had quite a few instances where our Labrador Sully has got very excitable. We've got a one-year-old at home that's just started to learn to walk and is waddling and toddling around all over the place. And if Sully doesn't quite know he's wandering behind him and he's excited, there's been a few times where that tail's whipped him in the face and has we've, we've had some tears to have to deal with. So again, it's just something that's worth being aware of and wherever possible, trying to be proactive and preemptive with it. Now, a factor number three is that labs were bred to swim and run all day retrieving game for hunters so they do have a lot of energy that needs to be worked out with appropriate levels of play and exercise every day they do fit in great with active families that bring them along with them for all the adventures but they're really not a great choice for families where their people are gone at work or school all day and if you don't have an active lifestyle you'll likely come home to a very destroyed house or yard now next, Labradors are extremely friendly and tend to like everyone that they meet without question. Now this might not seem like a negative trait, and certainly it isn't, but it means that Labs aren't really typically very good guard dogs. Their size and bark can be intimidating, which can make them potentially good watchdogs, but their trusting and friendly nature means that they aren't likely to defend your home the way maybe a Bull Mastiff or a Connie Corso or a Rottweiler or a German Shepherd would. So if guarding skills are incredibly important to you, maybe Maybe one of those breeds might be better suited. As with many larger kind of pedigree dog breeds, labs are prone to some genetic conditions and may be more costly to take care of over the course of their lives. Labs very commonly suffer from hip and elbow dysplasia, eye and heart problems, and they are more prone to cancers and blood disorders than some other breeds. The breed is also no stranger to food allergies and obesity, so they are not going to be a low maintenance breed, and that naturally comes with higher levels of fee. So if you're not necessarily in a, a, a stable financial situation right now definitely doesn't mean you can't have one in the future but maybe you should be focusing on getting that more stable before bringing a labrador into your home now i hope you enjoyed that video if you did make sure you hit that like button and if there's anything that we think you think we've missed off that is another reason that people should consider not getting a labrador get involved down in the comment section below this community we have here is absolutely incredible and it helps people become high level canine leaders that raise perfect canine companions so if you did enjoy it and you are new get involved in the 
community. Join by hitting that subscribe button and turning on the notification bell. And I can't wait to speak to you on the next episode of the Femre Labrador Show.